Story 1 Parents made every single birthday about my sister for the last 8 years. I recently saw a similar story read online and realized I just had to tell my own. This will be my one and only Reddit post. And I'm posting it because I thought telling it would help me feel a little better. I've been to some counseling and talking about this in particular really helped. So I thought why not just tell it online too. So I am. I'm 18 this year and fairly recently on my own from my parents. I have a sister about 10 years younger than me. She was an unplanned pregnancy and nearly didn't make it to term. I don't know many of the details of how rough my mother's second pregnancy was since I was never told much. But I do know that it was so hard on her body that my mother could no longer have kids after my sister was born. She was in and out of the hospital repeatedly that year. My mother almost didn't survive the birth either. It made her and my father latch onto my little sister because she could have potentially never been born. And ever since then, I felt like I was just the other kid in the house. Except for when they needed me as a free babysitter. The level of favoritism my parents showed long term has me believing they were genuinely sick in the head for not noticing exactly what it was doing to me. And now it's rebounding on them, which I'll explain here. Starting with my 11th birthday, my parents wanted me to let my sister blow out my candles because she was two years old and cried at the sight of a birthday cake that wasn't hers. I didn't want to do it, but my parents forced me into it. They lit the candles for me to do it again after her, but the moment felt completely ruined. The same thing happened the next year, and the year after that, and so on and so forth. They just kept forcing it until it became the norm. My sister had to have presents on my birthdays as well. I never got any on hers either. And when I asked why, they just told me that I'm a boy. And boys don't need to worry about it as much. I know I was a kid. But did they really think that was a smart thing to say? Not really. And my parents would always choose a place my sister would like to be at more than me on my own birthday. Eventually it became more like my sister was getting two birthdays a year. And I got known. Beyond this my parents made their entire lives revolve around my sister. If there's something I wanted to do, my sister had to want to do it too. Otherwise it was vetoed unless I could do it alone. I learned to just lock myself in my room with my video games because they didn't seem to bother me there. Unless my sister wanted to come running in to annoy me. Hence why I put a lock on the door. My parents wanted me to remove it. But I freaked out because I was an angry teenager who was tired of being intruded on at any given time. My sister came running in more than once when I had no clothes on. And my parents were upset at me for being naked in my own room. When I pointed out how ludicrous that was, they withdrew their objection and just let me keep the lock. My sister developed quite the princess complex because of how she was being spoiled on a daily basis. And she was very demanding. So I stayed away from her as much as I possibly could. Whatever excuse I could use to not have to deal with her. Even if I had to make stuff up just to have time to myself. My parents hired a teen girl babysitter and I got more personal time. And then the babysitter quit because my sister wouldn't listen to her and my parents tried to keep from paying by saying she did a bad job. The girl got some other people involved and my parents finally paid her what they owed her. Then they hired another girl to babysit on the regular and this one stayed. But my parents still made it clear that I was to be watching my sister any day I had free. Which I went out of my way to make busy at my part-time job if I could. My sister treated me as her personal butler and ordered me around. She even had a stupid nickname for me she wouldn't stop using. Just hearing that nickname makes my blood boil. And if I didn't give her everything she wanted, she'd cry and call our parents. And then I'd be in trouble for mistreating her. We had many massive arguments because of this. And after I refused to yield any more, my relationship with my parents devolved into barely any words spoken between us for some time. And yet, during my high school graduation they had the nerve to brag to other parents that they were the reason I worked so hard. Well they weren't wrong. But the reason they were thinking of was not the one that actually happened. I worked hard just biding my time for when I'd be free. But my parents acted like they'd done so much. 
Maybe they did before my sister was born. But afterwards it was all about her. They didn't even ask me about school until parent-teacher conference came up. I graduate with a B and C average. And after my graduation my parents just took me to some place where my sister would always have more fun than me. Even though the trip was supposed to be for me. On my 18th birthday in July though, things really boiled to the surface. Even though it was my 18th, it didn't feel like it was about me at all. I hoped to God that we were going to my favorite restaurant for once. But no, they had the party at the local knockoff Chuck E. Cheese, which is the only place like it nearby to us. So it was that fact a celebratory destination when never anything big was achieved, including my high school graduation. I did say it was a place my sister would enjoy more than me. I was surrounded by kids half my age having parties. And I was so bored with nothing to do but eat mediocre pizza and play claw machines and dated arcade games for tickets to cheaply made prizes that brought me no joy. Then when it was time for cake, my parents came out with one that was pink with white flowers on it. Sure it had my name on it, but it was very obviously not a boy's cake, and there were only 10 candles. My parents lit the candles and set it right in front of my sister to blow out. That's when it finally happened. I just had this mental moment of all the pent-up hate mentally flashing before me. And then I just started ugly crying. I, an 18-year-old boy, was crying in front of the whole family. Everyone was so shocked that time seemed to just freeze. I got up and all of the stuff I'd been holding in for the past 8 years just spilled out like word vomit. The entire family got to witness this event. And when it was finally over, I just walked outside to sit by the family car. Several relatives trailed out after me to say they were sorry and that they didn't know about the pink cake because my parents kept it covered till it was served. I said it didn't matter that they didn't know. They all sat back and watched as my life was taken over by Little Miss Sunshine for the past eight years. I had no real birthdays or celebrations of my own. They were all about her. And then, on the biggest birthday of my life, they all expected me to just smile and nod like always while they handed my sister a cake that was entirely meant for her when it wasn't even her birthday. Some of them started giving me apologies. But they made the excuse that all this time they just thought I was okay with it because my parents said I was. I told them I was never okay with it. And my parents forced it on me every year till I just pretended to accept it. I spread my arms out and said to look where we were. Does it look like the place I wanted to celebrate my graduation and 18th birthday? No one even tried to stick up for me all this time. I'm just the other kid while my sister gets everything. I didn't even get to have any of my friends there because my parents stopped letting me invite them long ago after they tried to voice their opinions over my sister getting to blow out my candles. There are 365 days a year. And was it so bad to want one that was about me and not her? Instead I'm treated like the greedy entitled brat for wanting my own birthday. Then I just went back to ugly crying. My father came outside by that point to yell at me for making such a huge scene. Because my mother was crying too. My sister was upset because I ruined her moment. And now everybody in there who saw thinks they are bad parents. I ended up yelling at him that they are bad parents and he should know exactly why. Well, after I said that, the rest of the family descended on him like a pack of wolves. Better late than never, I suppose. But I'd never seen anything like it before. My father was practically backed right up to the restaurant front door. And then most of the crowd flooded back inside with him to have it out with my mother too. My grandparents stayed with me and apologized for having their eyes shut so tight for so long. I don't know what was said to my parents in the restaurant, but it was roughly a half hour before they came back out. And when they did, they looked incredibly defeated. My mother was still sniffling after crying so hard, and neither of my parents could look me in the eyes. They both awkwardly apologized for what they did, and then offered to redo the party elsewhere. But that wasn't really enough for the crowd. One of my uncles, Ahmed, rather loudly. And my parents said they'd never make me let my sister blow out my candles again, or give her presents on my birthday, or make any part of it about her. There was another ahem. 
and my parents also apologized for getting a cake that was obviously not even meant for me, and that they just felt like I wasn't worried about cake anymore at my age. Oh boy was that the wrong thing to say. I became furious all over again and yelled at them that my age was irrelevant. They'd literally given my birthday to my sister and had no good reason as to why, and they knew it. Then I said there was no point in redoing the potty because it's too damn late. They clearly showed that I mean nothing to them. They ruined eight years of my life till I became an adult. What future birthdays with them could I possibly look forward to? Well, my father started to get angry at me for saying that. But when the entire family yelled at him, he shut up. My grandfather told him I'm exactly right. And there is no possible way they can undo the damage done now. He said my parents were awful people, played favorites, and treated me like a black sheep ever since my sister was born. And what's more, they were all awful themselves because they just let it happen too. And I mowed far more than an apology. I was owed my life back. My mother broke down again and tried to come closer to me while crying my name and apologizing. But I refused to let her anywhere near me. And half the family body blocked her from getting close. I just said I couldn't take this anymore and started to walk away. One of my aunts chased me down and brought me back. I could hear multiple family members yelling and cussing at my parents over what happened. But I was so upset, I couldn't even feel happy for any bit of justice after all this time. Also, where was my sister when this was all going on? She was still in the restaurant all by herself eating cake and ripping open presents that were there for me. And if anyone was wondering, yes my parents served her some cake after I cried and walked out. You think doing that wouldn't be their primary focus at the moment. But they were called out on it later. My grandparents got me to calm down and sit in their old minivan while everyone else cleared out the party. My sister threw a huge tantrum after being caught opening my presents. One of which was a brand new smartphone that she threw against the wall and broke because she wasn't allowed to keep it. She literally just got a brand new phone on her own birthday a few months earlier. I ended up being so upset that I was ranting that I never wanted to celebrate my birthday again. And my grandparents let me stay the night over at their house. When I came home, I still didn't speak to my parents. My mother just kept crying because I wouldn't talk to her. And my father was as closed-mouthed as me. The following weekend my grandparents convinced me to go with them out to dinner. And when we got there, I was surprised to find a whole new party waiting for me. My parents were there, and they kept up with the don't hate us. Smiles on their faces almost the entire time. There was a big chocolate cake with 18 candles on it. And there was even a banner with my name. They called it my happy belated birthday graduation party because I didn't really get either this year. I did kind of have to pretend to be happy. One good party doesn't undo eight years of favoritism or even make a dent in it really. And where was my sister? She was sitting at the table with her arms folded and her lip curled because it wasn't all about her like it used to be. And rather than sing happy birthday for me, they just sang an altered version called happy day. Then as soon as I blew out the candles, my sister screamed. I mean a near bleedingly loud little girl scream. My parents had to rush her out and then bring her back in later looking more upset than ever. She quietly pouted in her seat for the rest of the party. I did still get a new smartphone as well, and my sister got hers taken away, among other things for what she did at the prior party. But the smartphone wasn't all. The whole family had chipped in and gotten me a car. It was just an old white Volvo, but I loved it the moment I laid eyes on it. My grandfather knows a thing or two about cars and fixed it up himself. I was so happy. But my sister clearly was not, because she let out another one of those screams. She started having a massive tantrum and demanding a car too. My mother had to take her into the bathroom and they didn't come back out for a while. 
My father just went back to looking defeated. My sister had effectively ruined their attempt at trying to look good in front of the whole family. Multiple family members also had strong words for my parents that my sister was acting that way because they raised her to be a princess spoiled brat. I obviously started driving the car around right away. But only days later my sister actually vandalized the car by taking a hammer and breaking two of the side windows and cracking the windshield to the point the car was undrivable. My parents managed to stop her before she did any more damage. But she screamed bloody murder when they grabbed her and took the hammer away, then tried to bite them. Oh everyone was furious with my sister, especially my grandparents. Because my grandfather had put so much work into that car and my sister ruined it while having a massive tantrum. My grandparents had spoiled my sister so badly that she couldn't mentally comprehend that I could have something she couldn't. And several other family members laid into my parents about how they were setting my sister up for failure by making her an entitled brat that expects the world to be given to her. And she's going to have a terrible adult life because they won't put their feet down and teach her some respect. Well, her actions didn't go unpunished. My sister was grounded for the rest of the summer and effective of the new school year was sent to boarding school. My mother cried like a baby about it too. But my father had to be adamant that it was the only way to start undoing the damage they'd done. Yes, they fully acknowledge they are at fault. It was kinda hard for them not to since no one sided with them at all. My sister is absolutely miserable at that school. She hates the clothes, she hates the rules, and she's been lying almost constantly. But with cameras almost everywhere now, she's not getting away with any of it. Our parents tried to visit her a few times, but she just screamed at them for putting her in that place. From what I hear, this may be her school life till she's 18 years old. My parents did pay to fix my car. They had an auto glass company replace the windows and windshield, and it looks just as it did before. In August, my grandfather came to me and said if I was interested. He found me a job working for a friend, but it was 40 miles away. So I'd need to move out of my parents' house unless I wanted that commute. I was all for moving. Finding a first apartment wasn't so easy though. I had to get approved for a credit card just to get accepted for a studio. But I got it. And I have been living where I am now since September. My parents keep trying to contact me, but I rarely speak to them. Anytime we do speak, I just feel awkward and uncomfortable. My grandfather has suggested that they simply don't want to acknowledge how badly they failed as parents and trying to get me to forgive them will make them feel better about themselves, or something like that. But I'm not going to forgive, not anytime soon. I'm finally happy and away from them. Now they've got nothing. They don't have me, and they don't have my sister. And my parents had to take more hours at work because boarding school for my sister is not cheap. Nor can I imagine was the party they had to throw for me, or the repairs to my car, empty house, angry relatives, and the only thing they have left is their work. Feels like incredible misery to me. And I don't take delight in it. But it is the result of their own actions after all. Edit. I'd like to thank everyone for all the awards I've gotten. It really means a lot to me. I know my post was long and a lot to read. But I just needed to get the whole thing out. And I feel a lot better after having done so. I noticed a few calling this post fake in the comments in various ways. I do not blame you. I'd be highly skeptical reading this and wondering the same things in your shoes. But I lived it. Some parents just really are like that. I've also been contacted by a few people who went through similar and even way worse situations. With all the bad parents out there, is it really all that unbelievable as to what mine did? Granted the whole family running back into the restaurant to have words with my parents did seem like a stretch. But I come from one of those close-knit families where we stick together a lot and do things in groups. And it can very easily turn into an entire group against one person at gatherings. I've seen a drunk cousin be surrounded and then removed from the party to sober up in another room because he was being highly inappropriate. I'm not exactly a fan of group mentalities myself. 
but it ended up saving me because my parents were shamed beyond words for what they'd done. They couldn't even form a proper reason as to why they did what they did to me without sounding like even worse people. So they've basically surrendered saying they have no excuse and are heavily trying to get on my good side. And while a lot of you are praising my relatives for how they helped me, I'm pretty sure a lot of that help was out of shame. They were there for most of those eight birthdays, save for two years because of COVID. But in those other six, they didn't do anything. They had disapproving looks on their faces that my sister got to blow out my candles. But they just stayed quiet. Why? Well, my dad is the son of the head of the family, my grandfather. And my grandfather is a fairly intimidating person. Be on his good side and he'd do whatever it takes to help you. Be on his bad side and the entire family hates you. A good reason why I don't like group mentalities. But once my grandfather basically said they were all at fault for not doing anything to help me for years, they all felt shamed. And they all chipped in for the cost of my car. With so many relatives, they didn't have to donate much each to afford it. I had the receipt for the car when I registered it in my name. They bought it for $2,000 and then put more into it for some parts and tires. My grandfather personally gave it a tune-up and changed the fluids. My grandmother deep cleaned the interior. I'm extremely thankful to them all, but I still want to distance myself a bit. I need time to work things out on my own. And I probably won't see my parents again until Thanksgiving or Christmas. Some have also compared my sister to that character Eric Cartman from South Park. And it's a pretty close comparison. My sister is chubby because my parents fed her a lot of junk food. She hates eating anything healthy. I once saw her put gummer bears on mashed potatoes. The thought of eating that combination turns my stomach. Her poor diet also made her spend long periods in the bathroom. My parents had to buy fiber snacks for her to eat just to remedy that. And I don't think they were cheap to get the ones that actually tasted good. My sister is also extremely bossy and likes to think she's in charge. She ordered me around near constantly, which is why I often locked myself in my room to get away from her. She lost a lot of friends for being so bossy and controlling. And my parents would just tell her that the other kids were just jealous of how special she was. My sister even referred to herself as a princess often. And the epic tantrums she had when not getting her way do remind me of Eric Cartman. I know my sister isn't stupid either. She doesn't try very hard at all and had a C average in school. If she actually applied herself, she'd probably be a straight A student. Edit 2. It looks like I've been banned from this subreddit. Not sure what I did. But maybe I made the post too long. Either way I can't answer comments anymore. Sorry. But I do thank everyone here that gave me positive feedback from the bottom of my heart. Thank you all. Story 2. An entitled mother rips open the doors on my ambulance. And it does not end well for her. So, this just happened last night. And I still can't believe someone would do this. I'm a 30 plank mass and a paramedic. I've been in EMS for the past 8 years. And I absolutely love my job. Last night, we were dispatched to an 75-year-old female who fell at home. The patient stated that she tripped over her carpet and hit her head when she fell. We arrived on the scene and noticed that the home was a duplex with our patient's door on the right and her neighbor's door on the left. We made our way into the home and found her lying on the floor. The woman was awake and breathing. We started asking her the standard questions, are you okay? Does anything hurt? Do you remember the fall? Act. She stated that she has a pounding headache and that she remembers walking to bed and then waking up on the floor. In my field, that's a pretty big red flag. We notice that she's got a pretty good lump on the side of her head and a big bruise starting to form already. Noticing the bruise, I asked her if she was on any blood thinners. She said that she was on blood thinners for a previous stroke she had a few years ago. We urged her to let us take her to the hospital because there was a possibility that the fall could have caused a bleed in her brain. And she should go to the hospital to get some scans done. She agrees. And we begin to package her up. We apply a C-collar around her neck in case of any C-spine neck injuries. She denied any neck or back pain. So we lifted her up and placed her on our stair chair. 
A stair chair is exactly what it sounds like. It's a chair with tracks that we used to carry patients up and downstairs. As we were getting her out of the house, her neighbor whipped the door open and started yelling about how she couldn't sleep with all the lights and noises outside. The sound of the stair chair apparently woke her up, and she was not happy about that. My lieutenant walked over to her and apologized and said that we were dealing with a medical emergency and that we would be leaving soon enough. The Karen neighbor then noticed that our patient was her neighbor, and that's when she started yelling about something totally different. The entitled neighbor started yelling, you can't take her to the hospital. I have errands to run tomorrow, and she needs to watch my kids. My lieutenant again reiterated that we were here for a medical emergency and that her health is more important than her errands. The entitled neighbor let out a loud huff and then slammed the door in his face. We thought that was the end of it. We were wrong. After a few minutes in the back of the ambulance, we told our lieutenant that he could take the engine crew back to the station and that we were going to be heading out in a few minutes. After we checked her vitals, got an IV going, and started giving her IV fluids, my partner got out of the back and went up to the driver's seat. About five seconds later, the back doors of my ambulance fly open, and who do I see? The entitled neighbor, of course. Apparently, she needed a few minutes to get dressed before coming outside. I yell at her, what the hell do you think you're doing? She yells back, I told you that she can't go to the hospital because she has to watch my kids tomorrow. She then starts trying to pull the cod out of the ambulance with our patient on it. Luckily, she didn't know how to unlatch the cot and couldn't get her out. Our patient says, I can't watch your kids tomorrow because I fell and I might be having a stroke. The entitled neighbor yells back at her and says, you're fine. You don't need to go to the hospital because you're not having a stroke. My partner then hears the commotion and goes to the back of the ambulance. He pulls her off the cot and I slam and lock the doors. You could tell that the entitled neighbor was about to become combative. It's important to know that either the police department or the sheriff's department responds to our calls. Two, when it's at night, because of where we were, it took a few minutes for the sheriff's department to show up on scene, but he got there just in time. I couldn't hear much through the door, but I saw the officer get out of Hus Cruiser with his taser drawn. My partner runs back up to the driver's seat and starts heading to the hospital. The last thing I saw through the back windows was the entitled neighbor stomping towards the officer and then her hitting the ground after being tased. Super satisfying to watch. I was talking with my patient and asked what that was all about, and she said that the entitled neighbor will just drop her three young kids off at her house and leave for several hours at a time with no notice. My patient had no idea that she was supposed to watch the kids at all because, again, the entitled neighbor never even gives her a heads up about these things. Like I said in the beginning, this happened last night, so I don't have any updates, but I'll post an update when I learn more. Small update. My contact at the hospital said that the patient does not have a bleed. She does, however, have a real and nasty looking bruise on her face from the blood thinners. It's incredibly common. She will most likely be going home soon. There is no update on the neighbor. I probably will not hear anything back until my next shift day. Story 3. My friend's father body slammed him and cracked his head open. I was on a walk today and walked by one of my friend's houses. We are gonna call my friend Q and saw that he was talking outside with his dad. I stopped because I was gonna go say hi to him. But Q and his dad started to argue over something. Then Q's dad grabbed him by the shirt collar and body slammed him onto the concrete and cracked his head open. There was a lot of blood and Q's mom ran outside screaming I'm going to call the cops. What is wrong with you? I just stood there in pure shock and horror as one would. Thankfully his mom called an ambulance and cops. Update. Q is alright. He got stitches and the father has been arrested. Story 4. Entitled neighbor berates me for exposing my body to her grandson. I am simultaneously baffled and weirded out by the call I just received from my neighbor. Her son and his family are visiting for the week. I know for a fact that she is one of those people who looks over the fence at what we are doing and sends countless messages berating us for letting weeds grow in our property. I received a call from her. 
furious at me for walking around naked in my garden where her grandson could see me from her upstairs balcony. She screamed at me for 10 straight minutes without giving me a chance to get a word in edgewise. I asked her when this was, as I have never, not once gone outside the door without any clothes on. Apparently she saw me hanging up the washing in my gym clothes, a sports bra and short pants, and assumed I was wearing underwear. Now I admit I am not a small girl, but I am working on feeling positive about myself and therefore started wearing clothes that make me feel good. She demanded that I never wear such vulgar clothing again, or she would report me to the police for public indecency. I just laughed and ended the call. Please note, in our country most houses are surrounded by tall walls and security fencing, so she would have had to make an effort to see us from her house. Story 5. M. Karen requests the entire wedding to stop the festivities so everyone can sing happy birthday for her son at someone else's wedding. Stay with me folks as this tale has two nasty Karens. This happened at a friend's wedding I attended this summer. The newlywed couple had no idea that Karen 1M of the birthday boy and their mom Karen 2M of the groom were scheming together to make a happy birthday request with the DJ as the lovely couple finishes cutting their cake. Not missing a single beat, the Karens winked at one another across the aisle and Demon abruptly hand signals the DJ for attention and asks him to stop the music so the entire wedding would look over to her precious boy and sing happy birthday out loud to this grown-ass 38-year-old. The groom and bride had no idea, and the looks on their face was a fume and confusion. The birthday boy had no clue what just happened. I spoke up and said to Karen 1 how embarrassing that would be if my mom did something like that to me and that she should not have taken attention away from the newlyweds. She snapped at me and said with a smirky smile, well, this isn't for you now, is it? I rolled my eyes and looked away silently after realizing I'm talking to a wall. Story 6, Karen demands I give my service dog to her child as it's more in need than me. That happened a few weeks back and I was really hesitant to share it here. Hoping that Karen doesn't recognize herself here it is. It went to 3 non-binary was browsing in a shopping center with my autism service dog Noxonef as a training. I was picking clothes and trying them on hoping that at the end of the training I'll find something that suits my style. As I was entering another alternative clothes store Karen tapped me on the shoulder. Karen, you know that dogs aren't allowed in this store's right. Me visibly confused. I'm sorry, Karen. Are you deaf? I said that you need to leave. Me as I point to the NOX vest showing the label and the program name that certified her. Ma'am this is a service dog I've. Karen cuts me off. You are clearly not disabled even less you are not autistic. You can talk. Now leave the store before I call security and get you banned. Me barely holding my tears. Excuse me, plea. Karen, no. I'm going to walk you to the exit to be sure that you and your dog are leaving. In this moment Zeno X alerted. I needed to sit down but I couldn't. Everything was so loud and it seemed the lights were getting even brighter. I started crying and Deno X moved between my legs for comfort. Me sobbing and repeating. Go away. Karen talking over me. Oh grow up, my, ID, autistic, no, verbal, scam, dog, trained, my, old, more. Her speech became more and more muffled as I got even more overwhelmed. Attempt to sit on the ground. Karen grabbed my arm. Me, do not touch me. If up until this moment we didn't had a crowd, now we definitely did. A security guard appeared. I calm it a bit. Enough to understand speech. SG, what's happening, Karen? This person over here is faking. They have scanned a program to give them a service dog for their autism. My child will benefit from that dog more as it really has autism and doesn't speak. I need that dog. As she was saying I felt a tug on NOX leash and I unclipped it from her collar. Now I was holding NOX for her harness as she was sitting right in front of me giving me gentle snuggles and kisses. Karen, how dare you? SG do something. SG turned to me. Mister, is that dog a service dog? Me still crying, yes. Karen, they do not need it. SG, shush. Do you have an ID for the dog times times and can I have yours? Me, yes. 
I gave Vesg the needed documents. They checked them and gave them back. Times times I'm not from US UK. There's no such thing as owner trained service dogs. Service dogs are trained by professional trainers and are free. There are requirements that need to be met such as diagnosis and or an interview with medical team lead or therapist. SG. Your documents are intact. You may go. Karen. No. That's not fair. My kid needs that dog more than this adult. SG. Ma'am I will ask you to return the leash to this gentleman and continue your day. Karen. No. This is for my service dog that they are now holding. SG. Ma'am that's theft. If you don't return the leash now, I'm afraid, I'll have to call the police. Karen handed the leash to SG who gave it back to me. I was escorted to the restroom by SG to make sure Karen doesn't continue to harass me. I washed my face and went to the nearest bench to sit and calm down a bit more. Then I left. Edit. Karen did not call her child Annette. I do not remember its gender. Update. I was not expecting that to get that much attention. Thank you for the awards and the kind words. I spoke with a lawyer as many of you suggested. I can't press charges because technically she didn't break any law. In the country I live in there's no such thing as emotional mental damage charges and there was something about the physical touch that I didn't understand but it's not illegal. As to taking my leash, if she didn't return it would have been considered a theft. The laws surrounding service dogs are not understandable to me. Story 7. An entitled dad was the scariest part of my Halloween. This year I went all out decorating my yard and house for Halloween for the first time. It's my first house and I was super excited about trick or treating. I decided to go big. I dressed up, handed out goodie bags, and played spooky music. I just wanted to have fun on my favorite night of the year and help all the kids have fun too. I made goodie bags that included some stickers, a small toy, three fun sizes, and a full-size candy bar. I drew something cute on each goodie bag and had a lot of fun with the whole thing. About an hour into trick-or-treating a family pulls up on a trailer with an American flag and Trump flag waving behind it. Being pulled by a four-wheeler, several kids came barreling out and ran up to my door. The first few kids were clearly too old to be trick or treating but I gave them a bag anyway because they had a couple of younger kids with them probably 7 to 9 and they all quickly ran off. Then, trailing so far behind that the other kids were already back at the four-wheeler, was the littlest one, probably 5 or maybe 6 years old, cute as can be. I asked if she was having fun and told her how much I loved her costume and gave her a bag. She started walking back down the driveway when I'm assuming dad yelled loudly I hear this one has full-size bars. Let me see. And snatched the bag right out of the little girl's hands. He started to walk away and yelled what? Reno, no way. We got gypped. And turned around angrily and started up the driveway toward the house. I instantly felt sick, blood rushed to my ears, my heart was pounding and I steadied myself for an angry confrontation. I was legitimately scared for a second. I decided right then I was going to stand my ground even though this man was big and scary. Well, he apparently didn't see the full size bar at the bottom of the bag because he yelled oh wait, there it is, lucky for them, and turned around, hopped on the four wheeler, and left. Now, I'm not a shrinking violet, but I almost cried. I wasn't even sure why. Maybe the adrenaline that filled me when I saw him angrily walking back toward my house. Maybe because he totally ruined that experience for that little girl. Or relief that he wasn't coming for me. Maybe all those things. I was shaking so much that I had to go inside and collect myself before going back out. I still can't get it out of my mind. It really did put a damper on the rest of my night and I've decided that was the one and only time I'll be doing this. This world is so scary and people are so entitled that doing something kind still gets you threats. I hope that little girl is okay. Oh, I do want to add the one thing that made me feel a little better. Toward the end of the night, I heard a small voice exclaim from somewhere down the street stickers. That's when I remembered why I did it. ETA, thank you for all the kind words. I loved reading about your stories. And I did learn something after it all. Although I felt like a 17 to 18 year old was too old to trick or treat. 
I see now that it is important for everyone and I should change the way I look at it. As pointed out, at least they weren't out getting drunk somewhere. So thanks for setting me straight. Story 8. My photo shoot, my rules. No minors period. This happened a few years ago when 2016 happened and an uptick of Karens started to show up in my anime fandom. I used to host a few freestyle photo shoots which were with a fellow photographer I will call Euro. Euro and I had to have a rule added which protected us as photographers. We made the announcement that we will no longer allow anyone in our shoots under 18 unless their parents were off to one side supervising the shoot. This literally pissed a bunch of teenagers off and we got messages ranging from us being ageist to being jerks. One parent actually defended our actions because we were basically just trying to protect our reputations. One teenager couldn't stand it and messaged a con asking why we were allowed to throw his friends out. Mind you this was a 15 year old who had no idea why until we explained it. In 2016 into 2017, a person in the anime fandom was using cosplay for very sexual reasons. We realized who this person was and we decided to censor or private the photos of minor cosplayers. We also told parents that we would require to send them the email of the photos of their kids. Then there was a Karen who was completely going to fight us on the policy. For weeks before a con she emailed Euro demanding to know why we refused to put a picture of her daughter's award-winning cosplay on our public page. FYI the girl was 14. We informed her that with the nature of the cosplay community and some bad actors we couldn't in good conscience. Seriously, the lady was willing to put her daughter at risk. We again informed her that we had the best interest of her child in mind when posting images and private all our minors and would give the parents emails and physical photos, but no posting in public. She again called us ageist and we were embarrassed that her child could outdo the other cast players we displayed. If you've seen some of those reality shows about stage moms you get an idea of the kind of parent this was. So finally I decided to forward the emails to the director of the costume contest at one con. She decided to ban the child and her mother from competitions in Sagin Euro is the photographer. It's been two months since the convention and Euro has had to change emails because this lady won't stop. We been good sports but seriously, please follow the rules if a photographer posts them. Also this is still happening. We since sent the lady her photos of her kid and deleted them from our archive. So if she wants to post pictures of her kid's cosplay it is up to her. 